Hey, Master Trainer Peter here, back with Fitness Boxing 2 for Nintendo Switch, and the game has actually been out for about three months now. I've hit my 90 day streak, meaning I've done something in Fitness Boxing 2 every day since the 4th of December 2020. So you may already know I've already reviewed the game. Uh, I did a day one review, my initial impressions and how I felt it was in a kind of fitness perspective. It's pretty interesting if you want to go back and have a look, the link will be up there at some point. Part of a good fitness program is longevity. And so I really wanted to go back, have a look at my experiences over the last three months and see what I think Fitness Boxing can do for you long term and whether it actually holds up. Also wanted to see if my opinions have changed on anything. So maybe. So I guess the first thing that I should talk about and probably the thing that you want to hear about the most is my own progression and my own improvements in my body with my techniques and stuff. With continued playing of the game, I've noticed a huge improvement to my own form. My initial runs were pretty bad looking at my form in the demo impressions from back in November it was awful. I wasn't staying in rhythm well, my twists for the straights and hooks weren't executed well at all, and my defensive stance was shocking. I really should have known better. And with constant practice in game and definitely not out of the game in the shower, <laughs> <laughs> my form has absolutely improved. The rhythm with my feet was something especially that took a few weeks of practice and there's a lot of mental fortitude and discipline needed to keep the arms up all the time, but that builds quite easily. As far as punching form goes, this is really the biggest change that I've made since my day one impression. You see, in that first review, I talked about how my initial impression of the cueing and the coaching, it was very good vocally but it was not very good visually. You see, these visual cues are actually quite good. Their implementation and inability to slow them down is bad. There is a big distinction. As time went by, I found myself watching the model of the trainer a lot more during the punches, and that was where I really started to notice how my hips were out of place and how my shoulders and back were not quite doing what they were meant to. So by watching that form better, and by actually focusing on what the model was doing as well as listening to the vocal cues, I actually found that my form improved massively. This was especially prevalent when it came to the twists involved with the hooks and uppercuts from the leading hand and where you rotate your body with body moves. The models were actually very informative. It does take a lot of missing the moves sometimes when learning that form, but honestly over time from watching and practicing in the basic training area, it is really good. I really feel like my technique has massively improved. It's come on a huge amount. And I do attribute that to watching the trainers and making sure that my body was matching theirs properly. So my first impression of that was actually really off base. Over time, it definitely made a big difference to watch those cues. So happy to be wrong there. <laughs> happy to be wrong. As far as genuine improvements to my body mechanically, look, I'll be really brief here because I wasn't intending on doing like a 90 day review, so I didn't do any before and after shots. So sorry about that if you were coming here looking for body improvement images, I've got nothing. That being said, I wanna tell you that my shoulders, calves and hips I've really noticed some improvements with my technique and my speed there. I'm finding that when my shoulders draw back from punching, it's a lot more fluid and a lot more dynamic, which is really helping my posture with my back. It's alleviating some of the slight rounded shoulder I have. I'm also finding my hip rotation is more fluid, which is excellent. To me, the movement and the fluidity of each movement and the dynamics of that is a lot more important than the visuals. But I really feel like I'm making some improvements there, which is really cool. And I think that with continued study and continued play, you're going to see some too for yourself as well if you're looking at doing fitness boxing too. It took me a little while to perfect those knee movements though. And I will be honest, right at the start, I was noticing some knee pain on the inner parts of my knee that's possibly due to some slight knock knee that I have. After getting the rhythm down and getting my foot placement proper, I did find that that was alleviated straight away. So that was my own poor technique, but again, it just shows that you've really got to work on that technique to make sure that you're not putting yourself in pain. So since the game released, as far as workouts and gameplay goes, I have a lot of the same thoughts about it, especially the warm ups and cool downs. They're still one of the cheaper rushed parts of the game and the cool down isn't really worth doing at all. I've really got to sort out a video of showing you how to do a proper one to that sort of timing. Anyway, I really think the daily workout is well done. It is structured very well, varying in 
intensities across the session no matter what the time frame you use and the different sets for each day make sense. I've had my whole sessions focusing on my biceps before working cardio based mobility with steps and more core focused ones in the days after. It doesn't give the same sets day after day, it varies it if you want it. It also includes things like no mercy mode which is one of my next very big improvements in the game. I found quickly that certain workouts were becoming repetitive once you'd done them enough times but the no mercy DLC sessions really remedied a lot of that. They're longer enough to build up tension and technique so when you get to the longer combo strings at the end you're feeling the rhythm and pace properly even if it is quite tough. That's not to say that the game doesn't feel repetitive anymore, it favours certain movements and workouts, the same five environments and same few structured robotic vocal lines come in and each workout can start to feel like a grind. It's worth noting here that smaller issues that weren't really bothering me much at the start like the sort of sticky menus and the frame rate issues after a lot of play they can really cause some issues, especially with the frame rate where it is starting to make me miss some goddamn moves. The detection here hasn't improved since any of the updates either and especially moves like the block it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. I definitely advocate using fitness boxing too for cardio, but make sure you do other things as well because it can get a bit too much and hits the point of boring around the two month mark. No mercy and the randomization of daily workouts really helped though. Talking about it getting a bit boring, motivation is something incredibly important to touch on here because as part of a long workout, you need to have some internal and external motivation sometimes. So there's a few things that Fitness Boxing 2 does which helps you with your motivation. You've got achievements and clothing. So you've got that kind of customization of your characters and the achievement list which allows you to kind of pick off and you can look at things and you know hit certain targets. It's a pretty good external motivator. You've also got the graphs. Now the graph section tracks all of your punches, all of your progress with weight and stuff like that. And that is fantastic for tracking your progress, watching your weight go down and watching the amount of punches that you're doing go up is actually really, really fun to do. And that's a great way of internally motivating yourself because you're beating your previous self and that is something that we want to do with fitness. We want to be better than we were yesterday. As far as those achievements go, you start unlocking them very quickly at the start. You get them for pretty much everything. Uh, playing on different areas, playing with different music, for, for gripping the Joy-Cons properly, for playing with each trainer, stuff like that. There's a huge slew of them at the start and that naturally slows down, which is fine, but it's enough to hook you. That little burst of serotonin when you unlock achievement is really cool and it motivates you pretty well, so giving you a lot near the start makes you want to continue to play in order to unlock more. If you're struggling with your internal motivation, the achievements like this give that additional incentive as you fight to get the next achievement. It's a great system used in a lot of video games and I feel it's definitely effective in getting you working out in fitness boxing too. Some days you won't feel like playing, but knowing that you're close to hitting a new achievement can push you to do those extra sessions and get that little bit fitter, which helps you keep internally motivated. It is a cycle and it's one that fitness boxing tackles pretty well. I think it does help long term, but it is a technically finite resource. There are a finite amount of achievements that you can do. So if you're really struggling and you're starting to find that the workouts are getting boring, it's not fully gonna save you. You do need to try and work through that yourself. So I think I've covered most of my thoughts about the long term playing of the game, so I'll summarise. Longer term, the game can definitely continue to feel effective for you, especially with the wider variety of workout intensities thanks to free DLC, as well as a huge variety of different well-structured workouts thanks to daily workout mode. The queuing is actually better than my first impression and over time will help real progress with your form and posture when punching, which is incredibly important. There are some ways to go with this though, a massive, massive plus would be able to slow down the movements of each character. So you can actually see properly how they're moving through their body that would be really interesting. The game has its own methods of motivation in the long term as well which really come out to play after a few weeks of sessions. The hunt for achievements, the graphs and the tracking of progress and the unlocking of cosmetics encourages a more long term play. However there are still flaws and they do hang around quite a lot. The average warm up and god awful cool down are really really frustrating to play through. Frame rate issues, the sticky menus as well as the creeping repetitiveness of the stages, the punch is thrown and the robotic character voices, it does just kind of stifle your excitement after a while. It can be alleviated by not playing every single day like I have, that would be, <laughs> that would definitely be sensible. And consciously adding variety to your workout, so making sure you're not just doing your punches, make sure you're doing your side steps, your back sways, stuff like that, 
that will really help you to be honest and it's important to try other methods of fitness as well. I hope this has given you a good insight into how the game feels after a few months of playing it and how it feels as a longer term workout. It's definitely got the moves and the queuing and the motivational tools to get you through a longer term workout and to actually be effective long term. You've just got to push yourself through it. Keep yourself internally motivated and you'll do fine. Personally, I'm probably gonna to get to about day 100, see if there's many more stamps to collect after that one. I think 100 is probably gonna be it for the achievements, and then I might just drop it down to three days a week to make sure that I am properly motivated for the workouts that I do, and then it means that I can just bring more variety into my own workouts. It's been fun playing Fitness Boxing 2 for the last three months. It's been pretty cool. So yeah, what do you think? Have you been playing it for a long time? Have you been playing number one for ages and then gone on to number two? How do you feel it will handle being part of your long-term fitness routine? I'd be really interested to hear so let me know in the comments. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want more exercise gaming content and thank you so much for your time today. I'll see you soon. You ready? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me?